Good morning, church. I'm Reverend Sang Wan Do, currently serving as the Raritan Shore District Superintendent of the Greater New Jersey. I hope you all are celebrating a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Welcome to our Christmas time worship service. We are here now gathered to worship the Almighty God and celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and experience the movement of the Holy Spirit. Please join me in prayer as we enter into worship. God of love and God of wonder, we are here to celebrate the wondrous gift, Jesus Christ. Your guidance calls us out of the comfort space into the unknown. Those comfortable spaces seem safe, but you know they limit our possibility. Help us trust in you, to seek you, but to turn to you in every moment with everything. May you continue to come among us, shaking up our lives and shaking up the words. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, church. I am Reverend Evelyn Kent Clark, and it is my blessing to be here with you today. Won't you pray with me? Gracious God, we praise and honor your holy name as we experience another Christmas season. We are reminded that it is because of your extravagant and endless love that you sent your only son, Jesus the Christ, into the world in the form of a baby to die for the sins of all human beings. Yet even now, O oh God, we stand in adoration and surprise as we celebrate another Christmas season. Somehow every year the glory of your presence and surprise of your grace overwhelms us and we are moved from the mundane to the magnificent. The beauty of this Christmas season goes far beyond gifts and decorations and moves us to the beautiful and unexpected realm of wonder. Help us, O oh God, to share our joy with others in real and tangible ways. May our joy and wonder bring healing to the broken and hurting world in which we live. We pray today in the name of the Christ child and soon coming King, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, and the people of God said, Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, taken from the New Testament, the Gospel according to Luke chapter 2, and I'll begin reading at verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord. He has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by the sign. You will find a babe wrapped snugly in strips of clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm here with some pastors in our connection. We're going to ask them, how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? All right, let's go. How do you experience the wonder of Christmas? I love Christmas, but one of, one of the special experiences is sitting outside, campfire, light snow coming down, and a big cup of steaming hot chocolate. Mm. Um, I'm good to go. How do you experience the wonder of Christmas? 
for me, one of the moments uh, in my current setting is uh, in Bethlehem with New Bethany Ministries. We have this light up the whole town luminaria. And so it's a way just like for the church to be out in the world and, and like just look so gorgeous and beautiful as well. Uh, it just, just fills you with that feeling uh, and that connection with your neighbors of all faiths. Amen. Thanks. I'm wondering, how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? I experience the wonder of Christmas through Emmanuel, that God is with us and we get to celebrate how much he loves us by the gift of his son this season and always. Amen. Reverend Hines, how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? Well, in every season, well, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Now, Shelley, we'd love to know, how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? I celebrate the wonder of Christmas through the eyes of my 44-year-old autistic son who celebrates all year long. So he's off the charts right now. And uh, he still loves the manger scene and knowing that Santa is coming down the chimney. Eddie, oh <laughs> how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? I have recently been experiencing the wonder of Christmas through my son who is six years old. Christmas is spectacular for him, the joy of celebrating, the joy of Christmas trees, the joy of presents from Santa and others. So seeing Christmas through his eyes has been the most wonderful thing that I've experienced at a Christmas season in many, many years. How do you experience the wonder of Christmas? Uh, I think for me, the wonder of Christmas really starts the day after Thanksgiving. We have like our family tradition of putting up the tree. We put on the Grinch movie. We decorate the entire house, usually all in one day. It's frantic, it's chaotic, it's fun. And that's where the beginning of the wonder of Christmas starts. And then it ends on Christmas Eve with all the candles lit. There's just something really beautiful and wonderful about that moment and sharing the birth of Christ with um, a group of people. So. Yeah, that's it for me. Erin Duncan, how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? I think I always experience it in the context of family, whether it's my personal family or in the life of the church. There's something warm and wonderful about people getting together in the season of light and celebrating um, not only the richness that that season brings, but remembering that we celebrate it for Christ when he first came and when he comes again. And so that's how I experienced that in the context of family. Yeah, love it, thanks. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for joining. I uh, just wanna wish you and your family a, a Merry Christmas season. And I uh, hope all the blessings of this season uh, just fill your household, fill your friends, fill your neighbors uh, with a great joy of Jesus Christ. And thank you for joining me today. Um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about Christmas and the wonder of Christmas. And uh, when I was growing up, uh, Christmas for me and my family was wondrous. It was just a joy-filled time, was happy, and uh, there was always plenty of wonder to go around. I remember uh, growing up, uh, me and my brothers um, really took very literally the words, uh, Santa's going to visit, um, but if you're naughty or nice. And so we always, in the last week before Christmas, became the kindest kids in the whole neighborhood. I mean, we would do everything to help other people out. You know, um, mom was taking the trash out. Mom, I'll take that. Oh, I'll do the dishes tonight. And so we just were very kind in the expectation that we would get wonderful gifts that Christmas. Now, growing up in the Show family, um, back in the 1960s, I can't believe it was that long ago, um, uh, we would get the Sears catalog. Now, some of you may not be familiar with the Sears catalog. So much is done online today. But there used to be this thick book that would come from Sears. And it would come uh, in November, and it would have all of the things that anybody would ever want for Christmas. 
and particularly the toy section. I mean, there were pages upon pages of toys in the uh, uh, Christmas catalog. And so um, me and my brothers, we would go through that catalog, we'd tear off pieces of newspaper, and we would put it into certain pages where there would be a gift that uh, we would want for Christmas. And just in case there was any doubt, we would take a pen and circle the gift that we would want to make sure that everybody knew exactly what we wanted for Christmas. Well, in the Scholl family growing up, my father was a carpet weaver, and uh, there was not uh, a lot of money to go around. And so um, we were lucky if we got one or two gifts uh, that we might have circled in the Sears catalog. But Christmas morning was always so exciting. There would be gifts under the Christmas tree. There would be a tree that would be lit. Uh, there would be a platform with a train on it that would go around. Everybody would have a, a stocking. It was wondrous. And uh, we'd all open our gifts, and uh, it would just be a joyous time. Never forget, Dad always got his gifts. They were in his stocking. He would always get uh, several Hershey bars and a carton of Lucky Stripes cigarettes. Now, it's amazing. My father lived as long as he did, but uh, with the diet he kept and the cigarettes that he smoked, um, but that was his Christmas gift every, every Christmas growing up. You know, as we got a little older, it was interesting that we found out along the way that for some reason, Santa actually visited our house early and presents would be hidden throughout the house. Now, we weren't supposed to go and find those presents. They were to wind up under the Christmas tree on, on Christmas morning. But once we began to learn that uh, Santa was actually bringing the gifts early, my brothers and I would be curious about what we were gonna get that Christmas. And so when mom and dad were out of the house, we would go from room to room, checking under beds, checking in closets, be in the back of the closet. We'd go down into the basement, look around in the basement. We'd go down into, or into the garage. We'd look everywhere to see what gifts we might be getting. And uh, we would discover these gifts. And then I think my parents must have realized that we were actually doing that so they would wrap the gifts before they hid them and we became very good at unwrapping gifts and rewrapping them so they never looked disturbed and so on christmas morning the wonder was the surprise on our face when we saw the gifts because we already knew what gifts we were getting. And so the real wonder of Christmas morning was how we could look so surprised knowing the gifts we were already gonna be getting. So uh, Christmas in the Scholl family was really uh, amazing and a great time. But you know, one of the things I learned over time was that I actually more enjoyed not knowing what I was gonna get on Christmas morning, the mystery of it, and then being able to discover uh, f f f f at for the first time the gifts uh, that I would be receiving. There was just something about mystery and the ability uh, to learn and to be surprised and uh, at the wondrous morning it was. And so today I wanna to talk with you about wonder and I want to talk with you about three things of wonder, kindness, curiosity, and mystery. Now, first, let's take a look at this biblical passage. Man, it's a, it's a mysterious passage. I mean, here the shepherds are. They're out there in the middle of the night. All of a sudden, you know, there's this announcement that there's this birth. They see the star and uh, these angels. And uh, they, it's a wonder. I mean, it's a miracle. It's miraculous. It's a surprise to them. And there's this great wonder. But you know, this isn't the first wonder that happens in the story. As a matter of fact, if you read back further and earlier uh, in the story, you'll find that um, Zechariah, uh, the father of John the Baptist, 
um, was was muted. He he couldn't talk because he wanted to name his son after him. Um, as firstborn son, it was going to be named after me. And uh, God had other plans that uh, this firstborn son was going to be named John. Now, I don't know why Zechariah didn't like John. I mean, I think it's a great name to be named. But, you know, he didn't for some reason. But John actually means child of God. And so um, when uh, uh, Zechariah finally committed and said, yes, the, the, the child's name would be John, um, then he got his voice back, great celebration, birth of John the Baptist. So that was the first kind of wondrous story. Then the second is um, Mary and uh, John the Baptist's mother were, were walking and getting ready to meet each other, and the, John the Baptist leapt in the womb uh, coming into the presence of Mary as she is pregnant with Jesus. And so this is the second wonder that we already uh, hear about this story um, of the birth of Jesus. So already a wonder is occurring. Now wonder, uh, you know, one of the things I like about, particularly in the English language, is this uh, uh, stu wonder, this, this word wonder, really captures these two meanings. One is, uh, like it's meant in the Bible, a, a, a miracle, something fabulous is happening, something of God is happening. As a matter of fact, uh, in, the, in the Gospel of John, uh, John talks about uh, miracles as signs, God's presence, God's wonder in our midst. And so wonder means the, a miracle, uh, the act of God happening in our midst, the sign of God. God is doing something right here. But the other thing I love about it is this whole sense of curiosity wondering, you know, what could be happening. And certainly in the biblical story, both of, of them are happening in, in the birth of Jesus. There is this sense of uh, God doing a miraculous thing. And there is also this sense of what does this child mean for the world? What does this child mean for my life? So I really love that. Now, as I said, I want to talk about three parts of wonder. I want to talk about um, kindness, I want to talk about curiosity, and I want to talk about mystery. First is kindness. In 2017, there was a movie. It was called Wonder. And maybe you've seen it, but it's a story about this uh, young boy um, who's homeschooled. And the primary reason that he's homeschooled is because his, he has deformity of his face and he really doesn't like to be seen in public. As a matter of fact, whenever he goes out in public, he wears a space helmet so that people really can't see his face. And, um, and so his mother decides uh, when he turns eight that it's time for him to go to school, that he really has to face into being with other children, not wearing his helmet. And so uh, this is a great, powerful movie um, that, that, is, uh, that is called Wonder. And if you get a chance, I invite you to see it. But in there, there's this great line. And it says, choose kindness over being right. Wow, listen to that again. Choose kindness over being right. You see, sometimes um, kids like to find faults in others, and they certainly were right. Uh, his face was deformed, and uh, they could actually be um, um, pretty cruel uh, to this young kid. And it's a great story. I don't want to spoil the story for you, but that line of choosing kindness over being right. Have you ever been in a conversation and you just want to make sure that everybody knows you are right? Or have you ever been in a conversation where somebody keeps making the point that they are right? And it really never comes off well because it's more about them than the conversation or engaging with people. And so this whole sense of being kind over 
being right is so critical and important, and particularly in the Christmas story, because that's what God was really all about. God was sending Jesus into the world because God loved the world. It wasn't so much that God was trying to say, you got to do the right thing. God was saying, I love you. It was really the kindness of God that was coming out for the whole world in that first Christmas story. So kindness is really very important. And you know, one of the things I find in life is that people often feel they need permission to be kind. They're waiting for an opening to be kind rather than embodying kindness. Everywhere you go, every place you are, you are just kind. You care about people. You're thoughtful about people. You think, what does the person need before you think about what do I need in this situation? I was reading the other day about Portugal and, and their culture. Um, they have a culture of kindness, and people in Portugal are just kind. It's part of their values. It's part of who they are. And it was just really a, uh, a, an American couple who went and um, lived in Portugal who was telling the story about just how they find people in Portugal to be kind. And it's part of their values. It's part of their culture. It's just who they are. What does it look like for, for us? Or what does it look like for the congregation to just have a, a, a value, a culture of kindness, caring about others before we care about ourselves? I heard uh, a district superintendent recently describing going to a church and uh, they went in and there in the entryway of the church were some church people talking to each other never greeted the superintendent. Uh, the superintendent had to get her own bulletin, uh, find her own seat. Nobody came and talked to her. You know, that's a congregation that uh, exemplifies a lot of our congregations, actually. We're all thinking about what do I need or who do I want to engage with, rather than who's the visitor here who needs to be welcomed? Or who needs to, to hear from me? How can I be kind to somebody on this morning? So one of the things that really bring wonder into Christmas and what God brought was just a deep sense of kindness. Now the second is curiosity. And I heard this phrase recently and I've uh, really been thinking about it, meditating on it, and even talking about it. And this is choose curiosity over judgment. Wow, think about that. What does it mean to become more curious rather than judging people? Again, I don't know what you find in life, but I often find that people um, make judgments before they fully understand, before they uh, really uh, take time to learn and uh, to listen to learn. And so, you know, here um, in, the, in the Christmas story, this is really all about a very curious story. And you hear people asking questions all along. Mary's asking, why me? Who am I? Um, and the, uh, the shepherds are wondering, why are you visiting us? What is our part in this story? There's all of these great curious questions. What does it mean, rather than judging people, to learn more about people, to really try and understand who they are, what their story's been, uh, where they've traveled, what, 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 is, what, is, what has happened in their life that has helped to shape who they are? What does it mean that we actually um, start becoming more curious rather than making a decision already about a person or a situation? I invite you this Christmas season into um, practicing curiosity, just learning more about people before you try and have other people learn about you. You know, what does it mean to listen, to learn, uh, to be outward toward people and really try and understand who they are? And then the third uh, area is mystery. As I said, you know, uh, <clears throat> mystery was so much more enjoyable on Christmas morning when I didn't know what I was getting, and it was a big surprise. 
mystery. You know, a mystery has great power to it. You know, we live in, a, in a, an advanced time in society, certainly from the biblical um, understandings and what they understood. And there's science, we know so much more, and we know so much more about sociology and psychology, and, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's really important, that we continue to make advances in science and psychology and sociology and understanding our world, understanding people. But leave room for mystery. Don't, don't think that you've got to have it all figured out. Or just because you don't have something figured out, you've got to make some rational reason for why it happens. You know, wonders happen when we're open to mystery. When we know it all, <laughs> it's very hard to have any wonder. We already know. But mystery, mystery allows for God to do things that we never saw coming. There's a, um, a preaching professor. Uh, his name was Fred Craddock, and he was a great storyteller. But he, he tells this story about his family. And every Sunday afternoon, they would go for a walk. And uh, on this walk, this adventure, they would look for wondrous things things out of the ordinary, things that they hadn't seen before, and, and be astonished by these different things that they have seen. Maybe it was something in nature. Maybe it was a bird. Maybe it was kids playing in the fountain. Whatever it was, you know, it was a wonder to them. It was astonishing for them on that particular day. You know, I want, what does it look like to go through your life with just that kind of adventure? Let's, let's keep our eyes open for something astonishing. Let's keep our eyes open for something wondrous. Let's be surprised by what God has for us. And, uh, you know, I, this happened to me one time. I, um, I'm a runner. And, um, you know, I like to run, but I, I had some pain in my knees, so I had to give it rest. And so all I could do was walk. And, you know, the things I saw when I walked that I never noticed when I ran. It was, it was miraculous, it was, it was amazing. And I saw all kinds of things in nature. I saw things in people. I saw things in the, in the, in the, in the surroundings, the environment that I never saw while I was running because I was focused on what was right in front of me and I was moving at a faster pace. But when I slowed down and looked more around me, it was amazing. It was so amazing that I started to carry my phone with me because I wanted to take pictures of these things that I saw as I would uh, go on this walk. What does it look like to, for in our lives to leave some openness to mystery? Hmm, wonder. Wonder that's uh, built around kindness, uh, that helps uh, God's presence to grow up in the world. Uh, wonder that's built around curiosity rather than judgment and uh, looking uh, and asking good questions. And being open to mystery, the surprise, the wonder that God has waiting for us. Well, in this story uh, about this young boy with this deformed face, um, uh, one point in the story, one of the kids says, uh, why don't you get plastic surgery? And uh, the kid says, uh, what do you think? I've already had 20 plastic surgeries. This is why I look so good today. And, uh, and then uh, his mother says to him at one time when he's really hurt, he said, uh, she said to him, you know, God made you to stand out. Wow. God wanted you to stand out. You could have been just anybody, but you stand out. You know, God has made all of us to stand out. That's really what the story of Christmas is all about, that God sent Jesus Christ into the world, that we would all recognize that in God's eyes, we are somebody special. 
We may look different. We may, ha may have different experiences. Uh, we may not uh, think of ourselves as, as somebody who stands out. But God has put us into this world to stand out. And if you really want to stand out, well, choose kindness over being right. Choose curiosity over judgment. And choose my mystery over knowing everything. Let me tell you, you will stand out with those choices. May God bless you in this Christmas season, and may God continue to enrich your life as you continue to live the birth of Christ into the world. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. I hope this Christmas season truly blesses you. And uh, today, I send you forth. I send you forth into the world, into where the people are, because that's where kindness is needed. That's where curiosity is needed. And that's where people need to be, see wonder and mystery. And God has sent you for all these things to happen through you. So go out into the world, go with God's love, go with God's peace, and go with God's hope. In the name of the one who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer, amen.
go. Gee, I'm curious, how do you experience the wonder of Christmas? Uh, this is the wonder you coming to me. <laughs> I'll take that over any blankie. Hi. Only is right Christ our Emmanuel being made flesh. Right, you sure? We're ready. Human, and we know the path he would take to. You know, I think about this and so much more, and I'm wondering, what do you think about that? I love your hat.